Hey guys, what's up? Today, we're gonna take a look at the rarest, or rather the most expensive JRPGs on the PSP. And as usual, I'm only covering games that have a North American release, completing box editions, no special or premium box or whatever. And, like always, always, my prices were based on price charting, Amazon, eBay, and other websites. Alright, let's begin! Is the Odin Felgana, Is Chronicles 1 and 2, and Is the Ark of Napishtim. I'm leaving Is 7 behind because even though that's also the same case, it usually goes for around 40 bucks. So yeah, fortunately it's not that expensive. But these three games, I can't believe it. No matter how much I look, on eBay, on Amazon, and even price charting can't make up its freaking mind when throwing off the prices for these games, and I'm talking about the completing box versions, not the premium edition boxes. East the Old Felgana and East Chronicles both were originally released with a premium box. It's sort of like a special edition that has a soundtrack and whatever. These two games, but Napishtim was not, it only was released completing box like most JRPGs on the PSP. The problem with these games is that they can go around from 75 to 90 dollars 100 dollars i've seen the premium editions of these games the first two games for a 100 dollars so i guess it makes sense that the completing box normal standard editions of these games have to be less than that anyway i've seen cases of people finding these games completing box for like 40 bucks maybe less 50 bucks so yeah this is why I wanted to get these three games out of the way. They don't exactly belong to this list, but at the same time they do and might be the holy grails because even though no matter how hard I looked, I'm sorry guys, but I couldn't come up with an exact price for these three games. However, if you go to Amazon on eBay right now, you'll find them between, like I said, $75 and probably $100. Alright, let's move on to Monster Kingdom Jewel Summoner. This game has been expensive for quite some time. I had this game like four years ago when these guys showed up at my store, when I had a store back in the day, and sold it to me along with other games, including the Monster Hunter games. Those are extremely cheap, all of them. But he must have been confused, just like me, and thought that this Monster Kingdom game was sort of like part of the Monster Hunter series, but nope. I checked this game, I played it, and voila! It is a turn-based RPG, uh, similar to Pokemon, where your main characters have a monster or a creature in their party, and this is the creature they use for fighting. Yeah. Even though this game has an amazing voice cast in English, the game itself is... Uh, extremely forgettable. And if you want this game in your collection, complete in box, it's gonna cost you between $60 and $70. Is it worth its price? Ah, uh, yeah, no, it is not. It's not a hidden gem. It's actually a pretty mediocre game with a lot of difficulty spikes and some major gameplay issues. I don't recommend this game, even though I don't think it's bad, but up to you. Coming up, Persona 3. Yep, believe it or not, Persona 3 on the PSP is currently, as of the making of this video, one of the rarest JRPGs on the system. Because it usually goes between $60 and $80. Actually, this game usually goes for $80, like all, always, for the, for the entire year has been that way. But I managed to find a bunch of copies here and there for $64, $65, $70. That is correct. Persona 3... Well, I don't know why this version is so damn expensive, it's not like it was a limited print run. I mean, this game is really popular, extremely popular, so they should have printed a lot more copies than this. Persona 3 on the PS2, the original and the FES version, they're not dirt cheap nowadays, but they go for like $20 to $30, even sealed. So how come the PSP version of this game 
It's so damn expensive and rare. I think it must be because it's sort of like the definitive version, even though I disagree. I think the FES on the PS2 is the definitive version. But here, you can play as the girl. Yeah, that might be the reason, huh? Moving on to Hexis Force. Hexis Force is a fantastic hidden gem that I've praised in this channel many, many times before. So hopefully it's not my fault, it's so damn expensive. Now it isn't because you know what, even years before I make I started making videos in English, this game was already expensive. I remember like five, six years ago when I first played this game, I looked for it because I wanted to have it in my collection, complete in box, and I was just not willing to pay the price back then it was $50. So finding this game for less than $50 back then was like a luxury. Nowadays, well, it obviously has gone up in price. You can find this game for around $80, probably a little bit more than that. Prices are so inconsistent when it comes to PSP JRPGs. I don't know why, ever since I started making these rarest videos, there hasn't been any more inconsistencies than the PSP itself. I have no idea why. But anyway, you want this great turn-based hidden gem on your PSP, it's gonna cost you around $80. Probably no less, but if you find for less, good for you. Moving on to yet another Persona game, this time the remake, Innocent Sin. It's a remake, or rather a port, or whatever you wish to call it, from the original game that never came out of Japan on the PS1. This version also has sort of like a, not a premium box edition, but like a limited edition, collector's edition, with a soundtrack and whatever. That version goes for over a hundred bucks, but I'm not covering that one. The original, just complete in box. Well, ironically, it goes for a little bit of the same price, $100, but I managed to find a couple of copies for $85, $80 to $85. So yeah, it is a little bit more expensive than Hexis Force, probably because most people are looking for this game and want to collect it. Now, the question is, is this game worth its current price or any of the other games in this list? I don't think so. Some games are fantastic, Persona, Hexis Force, the Ease games, they're great games, but will you be going to pay these prices if you're not a hardcore collector? I wouldn't, so I strongly recommend you keep looking for these games and try to find them for cheap, if you can of course. Persona 2 Innocent Sin between $85 and $90 nowadays. And at last, the Holy Grail, The Legend of Heroes, Song of the Ocean. Of course, you were expecting a Falcom game in this list, weren't you? Song of the Ocean is the third game in a very underrated unknown series of The Legend of Heroes franchise called the Gagar Trilogy. Three games, the first one called Prophecy of the Moonlight Witch, even though we got it as The Legend of Heroes 2. A uh, long story. That game goes for around 40 bucks, and then there's a tier of Vermilion. That's a cheap game, usually 20 to 25 dollars, no more than that. But the third one, Song of the Ocean, oh my god, it's an 85, 90 dollars to 100 dollars. Finding this game is actually really hard. The others, you might be more lucky, but with Song of the Ocean, it's really rare. I barely found any copies on Amazon and on eBay. I found a lot of copies of all the other games in this video, but Song of the Ocean, I just found a bunch, and really, they're on the $100 range, complete in box. Is this game any good? Well, you might be wondering, well, it's a Falcon game, but trust me, it is sort of like a hidden gem, I think, that the entire Gagar trilogy, it acts more like a hidden gem than anything else, but it's not among the best hidden gems of all time. Seriously, this game is kind of very... a little bit of generic RPG, turn-based, and all the others, you know, Prophecy of the Moonlight Witch and A Tear of Vermilion are kind of the same situation. They're not great games like Trails in the Sky or Trails of Cold Steel, nowhere near as close as good as them. So these games are definitely not worth their price. Vermilion might be because it's cheap, but the other two, especially Song of the Ocean, hell no. This is a good game that I, I do recommend this game, but this price is just too damn steep for a game that is kind of generic.
You know guys, when people ask me if this is a good time to collect for the PSP or to start collecting for the PSP, I always say yes, because in terms of video games in general, there are still a lot of games, a lot of them, that are still dirt cheap. JRPGs is no exception, you will still find nowadays a lot of JRPGs that are not dirt cheap, but cheap nonetheless, like in the $20, $30 range and below, but as you saw, some of them can be quite pricey. Yeah, some of them have gone a little bit steeper than our wallets can afford, unfortunately. But those were the most expensive, or rather the rarest, currently as of the making of this video, JRPGs on the PSP. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!